On May 7th, the stock market was down. It happens. Stocks go up and down. But it's interesting to see when everyone is rushing to the exit all at the same time. What do you think the future has in store? You came here for the truth, so let me unveil that for you. Today we are going to look at an issue that took place on May 7th. Now while this is in the past, let's just take it for what it is. A possible scenario that could occur on any day of the year. Rarely did investors feel worse last year than on Christmas Eve when a whirlwind of selling sent the S&P 500 within points of a bear market by one measure selling pressure in stocks is even worse today. Again, this is on May 7th. Many people didn't even realize that. I mean, it was down, but it wasn't something significant that was brought out there. I did a video about it, and many people suggested that the percentage that it was down was completely insignificant. What they didn't know was the information contained within. It's not the size of the decline, but the speed with which investors are hitting the sell button. At one point today, some 89% of stocks on the NYSE traded in the red, surpassed Passing the threshold reach on December 24th when a 2.7% route in the S&P pushed the gauge to a 20 month low. This is what it looks like when the market starts to price in an escalation in tariffs. They're worried about the trade issues and there's good reason for this. We have seen the tensions going back and forth between China and the US for a year now. I do believe that this is not about a trade deal. There is much more going on. This is just one part. Obviously, these two countries are adversaries. They have been fighting in many ways and this has been going on for years and years, okay? This is very clear to me and anybody who has been paying attention to the geopolitics of this. But I do believe that there will be resolution to this trade issue, at least for some of the issues that we have seen coming up in the news. Agriculture for one, China has agreed informally to be purchasing more of the American agriculture. That's going to look very good on the U.S. There have been some other issues that have been brought up. A lot of it is hearsay at this point, so we don't want to make any claims. A lot of the information comes out and it says unconfirmed source. This source said that, that. That source said this, but of course they can't be public on that. We don't know. Any information that has been made public, most of the time, it's not very good. So that tells us that we have something to worry about. Now they want to get a deal done by Friday. This is the big day. This is going to happen. Many people have started to say that it's not going to happen by Friday, but it's going to happen. This has been going on for quite some time. It was supposed to be 90 days. They were going to get the truce. Make sure that it happened within the 90 day period. Then when the 90 days came up, they said we're going to indefinitely postpone this don't worry we're taking care of it months later here we are still waiting for a trade deal to happen an array of sell orders volume of the NYSE stocks traded lower hits the highest since December 4th just showing you what we just talked about a moment ago now this isn't important specifically because of this individual day that's not significant what is significant is thinking about when everybody's trying to rush to the exit what kind of problem people will encounter you have to think today unlike during the financial crisis or in previous recessions what we had was typically mutual funds, hedge funds, these investment firms, and individual stocks. Now today we have ETFs that have grown way bigger than where they were at back in the last recession. They were in their infancy back then. Today, however, they're massive. They're growing. In fact, many people are selling off individual stocks and they're going towards the ETFs. They're just buying the market itself. They're trying to do this. That's fine. However, we will have a big issue in this regard when people are trying to leave that's what's not understood and unfortunately many people are going to feel it this time around they don't have a history on it in the last instance so they're going to feel it and they're going to realize why a more controlled strategy and a more diversified strategy is far better they think that they're being diversified by investing in an etf that covers the s p 500 for instance but that's one particular stock China backtracked on nearly all of the aspects of the U.S. trade deal, according to sources. We've seen this many times before. The only reason I'm using this in 
here is basically to talk about what's happening with the trade issues. We have seen it time and time again, okay? They are concerned about this. However, I do believe that there will be a trade deal that is made. Probably won't happen in the coming hours, the coming days, but they're gonna have to resolve something. They want to both look like they're the victor. That's where the challenge comes in. Both sides will have to give up something, but they have to make it seem as if they fought really hard and they gained out of the situation. I don't know how they're gonna do that. That's probably the most challenging aspect. I had to cover this issue here because there is just nothing else that can be said about what's happening today without mentioning the size of government. We're looking at 17,600,000 that are government employees. We have a deficit problem. We have a debt problem. We have this going on not just in the United States but all across the world. The same problems exist here because of everything that these central banks have done to create this problem initially. Initially. We print money out of thin air and we expect it to create prosperity, but it never does. And then when there's a problem, government expands. And then we have another problem, government expands. Government is always there to be a helping hand, but it doesn't come without a price. We must pay for all of that quote unquote free stuff. This is a very big issue that isn't being looked at. I'm not saying against anything about government employees at all. If somebody works for the government, I know many people that work for the government and they get paid well, that's for sure. They have many benefits, that's for sure. There are many things that are good about this and I'm not denying that there's nothing against an individual. I'm just simply looking at the bloated government and every failure that they continuously make. This is an issue that I cover regularly here on this channel, robots and automation taking over the jobs. More than 7,000 robots will work in construction by 2025. I think it probably will be a lot more than that. They're looking at all types of robots right here. You can see this one, how it's able to manipulate its claw there and do uh, you know demolition and things. We've seen the bricklaying ones. There have been all types that they've been trying to bring in. And this will, of course, be something that will have a dramatic effect because these robots will work 24 hours a day and there is no problem continuing that process throughout 365 days a year. They don't get tired, they don't get injured, they don't get sick. When there's a problem, they can simply scrap it and replace it with another one. They don't have to pay severance. They don't have to worry about healthcare and so on. So this is just showing you what's happening today. We are seeing that bloat there, but ultimately the underlying profits of the corporations are the most important thing to them. They don't care about anything else. So obviously, if they could figure out a way to replace a person, put a robot there instead, they're gonna do that. And they are going in that direction. So I'm worried about what we face in the future. There are a lot of issues that are covered here. And this is all connected in together. If people would just understand the central banking system and how it is being used to manipulate us from the very beginning, all of this would make sense. That's all for this video. If you found it informative, please give me a thumbs up. When you give me a like, on this video, you are supporting me, you're supporting this channel, so I do appreciate that very much. If you want the financial education you weren't taught in school, these two books have everything you need from the foundation, history, asset classes, self-sufficiency, reducing your expenses. There's a lot in these two books. You can check them out at the link in the description, and if you want the audiobook, that's available at themoneygps.com. This is the fastest growing video I have ever done. You can see the 4.2 million cars that are sitting in these lots, just rotting. Check out the video, I'll see you there.